Well, before we get started, I do know one thing that uh, I wanted to go ahead and thank Dave, uh, Dire Straits Productions. Thank all of you guys for coming here. We definitely want to thank these gentlemen that are up here at the front. Uh, this is a great opportunity to be uh, in a room where we get to meet some legends. We have uh, watched these guys late at night. We'll, we've come home from work, checked out to see what's going to be on. You're like, oh my God, Halloween Resurrection. All right, I can't wait. Not Texas Chainsaw number two. You know, we've sat around at bars having gin and tonics, talking about who the better leather face is. Uh, we've had opportunities of which one of the uh, Halloween series we like or we don't like. Uh, you know, where you're sitting there thinking, uh, who came up with this script or what kind of an idea was this? And then you even think about that somebody came up with the money to pay for the movie even. But uh, it's a great opportunity to even stand here next to these guys. So let's get everybody up in here. You know, one thing I got, I got some questions here for you guys, so I guess until these guys get up here, one thing I'm curious is, uh, where were you, where were uh, you born? I was born in a place called Burnaby, British Columbia, and... All right, here we go. Right, I get a little kind of interesting going on. Sure. Well, um, you guys... Dean and uh, Tony are uh, going to be here. Yeah. And he said, they're swamp life. Swamp life, man. They're actually popular, so they couldn't make it. Hey, good. They'll be here in a bit. When you guys are driving, one word that describes the way that you drive. <laughs> uh, this morning, what did you guys have for breakfast? Pancakes. There you go. Yeah. And to breakfast. Did you have oh, breakfast too? Uh, yeah. Uh, I had a. I had a. <laughs> 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 We've got our fantastic horror hosts in the back. We want to go ahead and I'd like to even give Ivan a round of applause too for everything that he's done. He's done a great job, my friend. Thank you. Send some more. Uh, I'll send now. I'll send you the near do wells. Okay. We're killing some cats up here. Oh, man. Where'd you guys have to fly in from, or uh, what city do you guys now call home? Right. <laughs> Over the riots. Go Canucks! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you lost it? Well, huh? you put an R in front of it, it means rats of the usual size. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, I think we might just jump in here, and uh, when the other guys get here, we'll uh, kind of. Yeah. I'm wondering what's. Uh, I don't like Kate anyway. It's cool. Oh. Yeah. Well, it's cool. So 
Uh, who's got a big chair? Mm -hmm. Who's there? Who? 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 I don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't the skeleton cross the road? I thought that's why he couldn't get the witch pregnant. Where have I been? What did the zero say to the eight? Nice belt. Okay, we have to go to the blue material. Blue yeah. material. Yeah. Some, we've got some filler questions. Let's uh, have some fun here with you guys. All right. Kind of lighthearted. Um, the Monsters, Woody <laughs> Adams family. If you could have had the opportunity to have been in one of those series, which one would you have picked? The Monsters or the Adams family? Oh yeah, and Al Lewis. Al Lewis. Yeah, those both those guys were in it together. Yeah, that's how they actually got their start. Yeah. They sang a number from the captain's pinafore that was brilliant. And even Al wanted to be able to smoke cigars, and that was one thing that they had to allow him to be able to do. And those guys, yeah, they, yeah, he, uh, he had to be able to, to have a cigar when he wanted one. And him and Gwen actually maintained their friendship for close to 50 years. And I'm not friends. And Al ended up opening up like an Italian restaurant up in the New York area, where he would come out and uh, sign. You know, if you were having dinner there, he'd come out and talk to you. And then later, you remember when he ran for the Green Party <laughs> no. up in that area? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he ran for a political office, Al Lewis. So, oh yeah, things would have gotten better. I think so. I think so. So we I both have uh, the action. For him. Really? In Salem? Uh, no, Austin, Texas. Really? Tony Todd, ladies and gentlemen. Is it coming up? All right, so if we ask the group here, just as a statistic here, or do we have more Munster fans, we think, in the room, or more Adams Family fans? Who would want to go with the Munsters first? Okay. And so the rest is Adams Family. All right, all right. Here we go. Come on back, come on back. Man's got the Hitchcock silhouette. Everybody, welcome to Saturday. Everybody. Tony Todd in the room, man. Saturday. Summer, summer is here. So we'll start our life. What'd you have for breakfast this morning? I did, oh. I did not have breakfast. Okay. We got to do something about. Yeah, I don't, my blood sugar's all. <laughs> oh man. All I want is a and, uh, where'd you fly in from? I flew from Los Angeles did yesterday. You? All right. How was your flight? <laughs> now, I gotta ask, do, do, do people keep looking over at you, trying to figure out who, how they know you or that they know you? Really? Now, did you get like a screaming kid sitting behind you, or did you have somebody decent? Wow. Okay. All right, man. I don't know if that's it.
Does anybody know where Kane might be? Kane was Kane. lost in transition. I thought okay. he was already right. Last I heard, he had to go All right, all right, you know. Okay, let's go ahead and get going. You know, first thing I wanted to do is, here we are, we've got some of the greatest warrior legends that we know of right now, and they are standing or sitting right here next to me. So the one thing that I thought about is today, on stage, this is a great opportunity, because, you know, I always like the movie The Warriors, and the one scene I always liked is when Cyrus gets up there and he talks about how we got this gang next to this gang, and we got this gang next to these guys. And you know, right now, We've got, in this room, when everybody gets up here, we're gonna have Jason next to Michael Myers. We got Candyman next to Leatherface. I mean, we've got all the power here. So as I could say, can you dig it? <laughs> so, you know, I wanna go ahead and uh, start, we're gonna go ahead and start with Tony over here. I got a great idea. Here we go. All right. Tony, I know that uh, you played a great junkie in Oliver Stone's Platoon. You had a hell of an all-star cast in that. I think one thing that I was curious about was uh, what was it like to work with Charlie Sheen? <laughs> stuff and says his best friend is Tony Todd, but it's not me. It's a guy that, I guess, wants me. It's not me. I was not his best man at his wedding. Oh, really? I will say this. When we, and I don't like throwing anybody under the bus because they were in the face of the illness. Obviously, he has. Uh, but when we were doing our boot camp training, we all were doing our thing and everybody participated in those 25 miles. <laughs> and uh, working with Oliver. Oliver is insane. He's yeah. Weird. He's a genius, and I thank him forever for giving me my first film. And, uh, and, and to this day, I, you know, we got to give it up for Platoon. I mean, that is a movie. Yeah. Hey, we got Kane here. Um, you know, I just wanted to let you know we just kind of did a quick little opening. We've got. Uh, Jason again next to the candy man. We've got we've got everything going on. So Kane, I wanted to ask you, you know, to this day, you had the great opportunity to play Ed Gein in a fantastic Ed Gein Butcher of Plain Field. When you were getting ready to do that role, what kind of preparation did you go through or what did you do to get yourself prepared to be Ed Gein, one of the most notorious serial killers? Well, I already knew the the whole story of Ed because one of my hobbies is reading true crime. So when Mike Pfeiffer asked me to play the character, I was surprised. For one thing, sorry, I have candy in my mouth. <laughs> um, because Ed Gein was not of the same stature that I am. And I was a little surprised, but I was also flattered that he thought I could play a character that had more dialogue than I had been used to at the time. And uh, I was just really happy to be able to do it because uh, I knew the whole story, just like I played BTK, same, same type of thing, I already knew that whole story, and it was a challenge to play a character that really did that shit, instead of making it up. So I know, a fantastic film. I think uh, you were, of, you know, I know that there's a lot of, kind of a fun thing between you and Railsback, but I personally think that you did the uh, better Ed Gein, if I may uh, give that endorsement here today, so. He even said that, no. Yeah. <laughs> well, Bill, I wanted to ask you that, you know, I've met some of the cast over the years that were in Texas Chainsaw 2, and um, a lot of things seemed to come up, and the one thing was Toe, 
and that I understand that there was uh, some partying going on on that set and during the making of that. You had Dennis Hopper trying to play golf at, uh, with Willie Nelson. You had Toby running around. Um, tell us a little bit about sort of what went on when that film was going on, and uh, I know that I had a chance to speak to you yesterday. If you could kind of share a little bit about where that was filmed. Uh, Hellmouth, Texas. That's what we dubbed the, the set. Uh, it was a particularly hot, hot Texas summer. And the bugs were out really bad. What was your question? <laughs> <laughs> Those were a lot of party going on. Partying. I was sequestered in uh, my trailer. <laughs> locked me in there when I wasn't in front of the camera. So I only have rumors. But I did hear about some things. <laughs> so I guess the camera assistant goes into the dark room to change some film and opens up one of those big cans and about a pound of coke falls out. <laughs> but I don't know. I wasn't there. <laughs> I just heard about it. Yeah. And then there was, what was it? Uh, yeah, the smell of ether was everywhere, supposedly. Wow. Well, it was during the free base days for you. Free base. Not a, this is rumor. This is rumor. <laughs> you know, the teamsters have been talking, they've been going around the trailer, they've been smelling ether. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he was an insulted. So, yeah, there was, I guess, party, but it was work. It was crazy. How many days were you guys, was it a long shoot? I mean, was it a lot of... It's ten weeks. Ten weeks? It's ten weeks. And Dennis Hopper was pretty cool? Yeah, Dennis is very cool, you know? He's, he's a very... Uh, did, ultra. Did, did Tobe let you guys ad-lib a little bit? I mean, or did you yeah, get a really invited, interesting... He invited a lot. Bill did, you know, yeah. a lot of improv. And Toby was very... Uh, and then... And then everybody jokes about the bridge scene that goes on for like 20 miles. Uh, you know, it starts out as kind of a small left. That bridge loop. is as long as this room. That's it. Really? <laughs> really? So. Maybe not that long. It wasn't very long. Let me ask Brad. Um, hey, Brad, while you were uh, shooting Halloween Resurrection, I know that, uh, you know, you're with Jamie Lee Curtis. A lot of people think that she's an incredible uh, actress. And uh, I was just kind of curious. Did she offer you any advice? How did that work out? Uh, how was it like working with her and uh, being involved in that picture? Um, no, Jamie, uh, pretty much kept herself. She was very professional, very down there. She didn't offer me a whole lot of advice other than walking through Teeny Brothers Chase Mall. But uh, <laughs> it was a great experience because she was, she, was, she was wonderful to be around. And um, she gave me a big kiss on her way to She's rushing off step to the airport. Told me it was delicious, whatever that means. That's great. That's great. I'm going to bounce this over. No. We can't. Can we get that off? Oh, no. You had free bass here. Yeah. I'm going to get down to free bass. A horse. Free bass at 83. Charlie wasn't there. Here we go. Just trying to lie. There we go. All right, Tony. All right, you know, we've got Tony's right here, and if you guys know or don't know, he had the opportunity to be in Tom Savini's remake, Night Living Dead, and uh, his character of playing Ben, I think, was incredible. Uh, that film has, again, carried its own. I think it brought it up to another level. Uh, so I'm going to ask you, Tony, what was it like to work on the film, and what was it like working with uh, Tom Savini? Did you like working with Tom? I love Tom Savini, particularly when I went to the zombie makeup truck, and all these zombie guys were all in there, like, you know, cracking it up and stuff. Are you kidding? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. There's no drugs in Hollywood. <laughs> 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 we'll, 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 no. we'll bring up celebrity rehab here in a little no, bit.
There you go. Well, the whole idea of just everything that went through, you know, you're playing Ben. Is you, it uh, me or do I hear music in my head? You're, you're hearing music a little bit in the head. It's coming kind of from behind. <laughs> I thought it would make a nice little, it's, it's you know. It's nice ambiance. You may have a problem with it, but what's the question, man? <laughs> no, I just. Yes, no, no, the, the whole Tom should be, you know, all right. You know, you're working on the cast. These guys are in there. Um, I just thought maybe you might have a memory or two that you might throw out. How, what kind of shoot was it? It was terrific. It was my first lead role. So obviously, as any actor can attest, you're thrilled. You're just screwed. Did, it's a privilege to do what we do. This is not, I don't take it lightly. I know Kenny does it. I'm sure no, this is nobody, this is a gift, right? So uh, I was happy to be in Pittsburgh doing a play. I heard rumor they were doing Night Living Dead. I ran. I did not walk. I ran over to the production office and I said, you got to read me. He said, well, we're really close, close. He goes, you got to read me. Sometimes you fill it in your gut. And he did. He listened, he gave me time, and I could see that he felt it. By Monday, I had a deal. That's fantastic. My son was born. You know, I was a dad for the first time. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know, I want to bounce this over to Kenny. Kenny, with all the stunt work that you've done, and there's been a lot of things that you've been asked to perform, has there ever been anything that you were asked to perform that you didn't feel comfortable about? Uh, Stunt-wise, no. I just, uh, if, if there is a stunt that you feel is a little unsafe, then you can change it usually uh, to make it a little safer if you're a good stunt coordinator. And uh, so I've never really turned down anything. Uh, I was a little hesitant to do fire stunts for a couple of years after I got burned, but then I got over that, so I've done tons of them since. And uh, in fact, did one in Hatchet, and, uh, of course on Friday 7, but uh, really there's never been a, a, a stunt that I turned down. There's been some things that right. have changed a little bit, but that's it. Cool, cool. Let me bounce this over to Bill. Um, you know, Bill, when I was looking around, I noticed that you had the opportunity to play in Oliver Stone's talk radio. We were at, asking uh, earlier Tony about working with Oliver. Um, you were what's referred to as the number one fan. Uh, what do you recall about that? And can you tell me what that line was? Because you called in, right? Aren't you one of the call-ins? I did some call-in, but I don't know what the... Okay. I, don't think, I think I did the floor. I had a number one fan with uh, Eric Bogosian. Yes. Yeah, what was... Fan. And that was even a part of the other part I was going to ask you. What was? Did you get a chance to work with Eric? I mean, in the sense of, were you guys, did you do anything together in that? Just that scene. That was it. And then, that did you get much direction at all from Oliver? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's a good I, movie. I think Talk Radio yeah, turned it's in. Good. It's a great movie. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I was originally going to be the person who shot. Oh, him. really? Really? And they brought in this really excellent guy named. Rockets Red Glare is his stage name. He was kind of a creepy guy, too. <laughs> creepy. Yeah. The sweet guy, looked creepy. And uh, wow. a really great choice for that part. Wow. Yeah, but uh, Oliver was, uh, he really focused with you and joined you and kind of get into character with you and talk about it. And, uh, and saying hello to Smith and Wesson. Yeah, that's great. That's great. You know, and I wanted to go ahead and bounce something over here to Brad. Um, Big ball, Brad. You know, there we go. We got it. Um, Brad, you know, you've been involved in an awful lot of stunt work uh, yourself for films. How did you yourself get involved in stunt work? Well, uh, as a young man, I worked. I got into kickboxer as a huge Bruce Lee fan. Got to join local karate school, and my karate instructor, a guy named Tony Morelli, went on to become a world kickboxing channel. And as his sparring partner and his protege, as per se, he dragged me along. And then in the early 80s, when the film industry started coming to Vancouver, he was doing background work and standing work. And the stunt guys took him aside and said, hey, you're a world champion. You'd like to be our corner and part of our group. And he introduced me around and dragged me along with him. And that's, that's actually how I ended up in that industry. Wow, that's 
fantastic. That's great. Um, you know, I tried to bounce this around. I, didn't, I thought Dave described it to be some yeah. separate mic, so I don't mean to keep bouncing this mic around here. You know, I gotta say, you know, I mean, we talked to a lady about Vancouver, what happened, unfortunately, but Vancouver, if you haven't been there, it's one of the prettiest, greatest cities in North America. Thank you, Charlie. And it's, uh, been there 20 times or so, and you and I worked on a project that yeah. did not get picked up called Ben. It was a TV series, so. Wow. You've been to Vancouver? Yeah, we did uh, Jason Hickey. Oh, that's right. right. I love yeah, Vancouver yeah. also. Awesome. Wow. Good sports town, great northern lights. Just Bring your marshmallows. Bring your marshmallows. <laughs> well, since Tony's got the mic. <laughs> Good variety. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just a little brilliant of his misunderstanding. So let me ask you, Tony, when you were uh, in The Crow, fantastic movie. I mean, you know. You got the opportunity there again. Here's a film with some incredible cast. Um, what kind of uh, experience, you know, what do you remember about Brandon? Uh, I remember Brandon's vitality for those of you that don't know. He was unfortunately uh, killed on the set. I, uh, we were all together for four, four months. And really? It was really a close group, not unlike when you came and I did have to do. over to Kane if we can. Um, you know, Kane, when I was looking and, you know, I noticed that you've done a lot of acting, you've done a lot of stunt work. Um, one of my first questions, and, and even as I was speaking to some friends, you know, which one, uh, is there one that you prefer over the other? I mean, do you appreciate or the kind of, uh, I guess, getting ready to do some stunt work or versus being an actor? Is there one that you prefer over the other? Well, I, I never anticipated being an actor at all. I just wanted to be a working stuntman. That's all I went into business uh, with the idea of doing. Just got lucky, got some character stuff, and feel at, very honored to have played the character of Jason because you know it was it was known worldwide before I ever got there. So I already was a fan of the character, and then to suddenly be in the position of playing that character. It was a tremendous honor. I'll always be proud of that. Um, but, you know, the challenge, the physical challenge of doing stunts is something I've always enjoyed, but then the challenge of delivering convincing dialogue is, is much harder than uh, I anticipated, and it takes a certain talent, and I've never been trained at, at all as an actor, so if, if I do anything convincing, it's just because I've watched other actors on the set that were um, quality actors. I always say that uh, my best training was working with Charlize Theron <clears throat> in Monster, because I was a stunt coordinator on it. So I would watch her work every day and just how she got to certain places and her performance and stuff was the best training I could have ever had. She killed it that. Yeah, that was a great movie. I mean, she won an Oscar for yeah. it. They were, they were talking about Oscar stuff while we were shooting it, which I found very strange. But you know, and then to, to have it actually happen was amazing. Do you have a favorite, Jason? I know you get asked that a lot. Yes, I do. Uh, part seven is my favorite because I think the look of Jason was the best, and the makeup, and then the fact that. In that particular movie, I had so many stunts to do as the character that it was a perfect situation for me. And uh, I just, I just, you know, none of them were uh, riveting with the writing of the, the stories, but, you know, I think that was the, the most fun one. So, I got kind of a fun question I wanted to work up for all four of you, and we'll go ahead and start down here. 
Um, Kane, if you had the opportunity to have worked with either Vincent Price, Boris Karloff, or Bela Lugosi, who do you think you would have uh, appreciated? Uh, well, I, I can tell you I did work with one of them. Which one? That's, who, who do you think I worked with? Boris. That's Vincent. 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 He, Vincent Price had a TV series that nobody ever really remembers. It was called Time Express. Hmm. It was like a time machine type thing. It was, I don't even think it made it through one season, but I did one episode of that show. And uh, I didn't really do a scene with Vincent, but I was on the set with him. And that, that was very cool for me because, you know, I had been a fan of his since I was a little kid, so that, that was great. And, you know, I would have loved to work with any of them. They're all heroes, really. Blazed the trail, you know. They sure did. They sure did. Tony, what do you think? Um, well, somebody told me Vincent Price is from St. Louis. That is correct. That is correct. Uh -huh. That's great. Um, applause. You're doing that. It's hard to... Every actor has their own unique individual charm and stuff. You're absolutely right. I apologize. Um, I wanted to throw Vincent in for the St. Louis angle. I understand. I get it. Um, you know, uh, Boris is a class to be trained stage actor, so I think that part of it. But I think for the Browns, it would have been good for me. Kane and Bella. Really? Just because how he was treated after he mm -hmm. in such an iconic role that allowed us to travel. Fantastic. What do you think, Brad? I, uh, yeah, I am, um, I have to go with Bella. Do you? Any, any uh, specific reason? Well, I, I am not super familiar with these, these uh, old, old, the old uh, icons of horror. I wasn't a big horror fan growing up. Really? But I so enjoyed um, Martin Landau's portrayal of yeah, Bella. Yeah, what, was, excellent so film, cool. excellent, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you, you like cry at the funeral. Yeah. As a child, I listened to this uh, Disney album of fairy tales that Boris Karloff told. Awesome storyteller. Three kids, Boris Karloff. <laughs> Gingerbread man. Oh, great storyteller. I think this guy is awesome. So, you know, I, I think we probably could have hung. Okay. All right. Picked up some deep All right. From. There you go. Um, so. You know, I had a lighthearted question. You're growing up. Do you guys, and if you want to kind of just shout it out, and we're going to hand the mic back down. What was one of your favorite horror films as a kid growing up? Did you have a specific one? The Birds, for me. Really? Really? It scared the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, so anything? how old I am, but... Uh, Abbott and Costello, like I said. Great film. Great. There is some legend right there. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Okay. So, and earlier, uh, when we were waiting for you guys to come up, I'm going to bounce this back to you two. If you had the opportunity to have even either been uh, in the Munsters or in the Adams Family, which one do you think you uh, might have uh, liked doing? Well, I like the Okay. Okay. Very odd question. <laughs> it's a good one. Yeah. I, I think I watched... Psychological profile. <laughs> I think I'd probably say The Monsters just because I used to watch it. And, uh, you know, that was uh, Butch Patrick. Yes, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've done some yeah. conventions with him. Very uh, unique individual. Yeah, he is. Great guy. Well, I got one more question. It was kind of lighthearted and fun, same sort of thing. When you're sitting around in circles, everybody seems to talk about either the Twilight Zone or the Outer Limits. We all grew up, personally, like one of those. Tony, were you more of a Twilight Zone or an Outer Limits guy? I love them both. I love that, you know, distortion thing. But, I mean, if you're going to make you choose, obviously, Twilight Zone is more classic episodes. But they both moved me as a young child. 
child sure, in the sure. days that I didn't even know that we would all end up doing this crazy thing. Right, right. Did you um, have one yourself? I like both as well, but more so the Twilight Zone. And once again, I did an episode <laughs> of the new Twilight Zone. Uh, and if anybody can tell me later at my table what the name of the episode was, I'll give you a, a picture or something. That's a fantastic. What about you guys? Twilight Zone fans or Outer Limits? I, I've got to go Outer Limits because I've worked on the Outer Limits. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah, it is. Wow. It's a good reboot. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Twilight Zone. Yeah, the Zone. Okay. One of my favorites was uh, with Ed, uh, Keen, uh, Ed Wynn. Hitch. Wow. And wow. he held off death from killing this little girl. Wow. In his suitcase and pitched. He pitched him. He was awesome. Oh, that's great. That's yeah. great. Well, I thought we'd take, because we're getting ready to wind up, these guys want to get back to their tables, uh, which we do want everybody here to make sure that you visit these guys, go up to their tables, tell them about the films that you've grown up, the films that you love. And uh, again, you know, like I said earlier, to be able to have Candyman sitting next to Jason, Leatherface sitting next to uh, Michael Myers. I mean, this is something that is kind of rather historic. I, I knew I wasn't going to get in the right order, but you know what? You're still all within five or six feet. So as they would say in the Warriors again, can you dig it? So I want to thank these guys for coming out, and I want to thank everybody for popping out. And uh, thanks again. Have a great afternoon. Thank you. All right. One o'clock. No, that too. But. All right. Thank you again. Thanks, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. You're alive. You're alive. You're alive. How are you?